Gentleman reserved, gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I've, I've talked a lot today about, um, about the Health Care for Burn Pit Veterans Act, which again, the Senate version. That legislation carries the support of leading veteran service organizations, VSU, VS, VSOs, including disabled American veterans, veterans of foreign wars, the Wounded Warrior Project, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, and the American Legion, as well as the Military Office, Officers Association of America. Again, that Senate version passed unanimously. We could be running that here today and get on the president's desk at the end of the week. The only thing that stands between getting help to veterans right now in terms of the uh, uh, burn pit issues is the Democrat Party's refusal to just run the Senate version of the bill. But Mr. Speaker, I would, like, I would like to yield to the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, one minute. A gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my friend for yielding, but more importantly, for his service to the nation. And when he talks about that bill, you think in Congress, when can you find something that's bipartisan? Here you have something come out of the Senate that Republicans and Democrats both agree upon. Republicans on this side of the aisle will vote for that. The only things holding it up for these veterans are the Democrats. They know the bill they're going to produce won't go anywhere, and hopefully we can come back and get this done and be at the president's desk. It would have been nice. The president could have a bill before here comes for the State of the Union. He could actually sign something, but unfortunately, politics again gets in the way. Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to the rule and to support Mrs. McMorris Rogers and Mr. Westerman's legislation. The crisis in Ukraine is a crisis of American energy security. Over the past decade, we have had every opportunity to lead. During the previous administration, we were energy independent and an ex-exporter of energy for the first time in 50 years. Today, however, we have an administration that crippled domestic production. This administration has increased its daily reliance on Russian oil by 34%. 34%. As every American is glued to their television to see what's happening in Ukraine, to see the bombing of innocent children and women, there's not one American who would want any of our money to go to fund that. But in this administration, you had actually done that, increased the production of oil coming from Russia, and natural gas to America. Meanwhile, it slow walked oil and natural gas exports to our allies in Europe. In doing so, it made Europe more reliant on Putin. Today, 40% of natural gas and 25% of crude oil in Europe comes from Russia. The Biden administration has made the free world dependent on the deposits of oil and natural gas from Russia. We all know that is shameful. As an economic and energy superpower, why are we relying on dictators when we should be supplying the world? If you're like me and you're concerned about the environment, do you realize that American natural gas is 42% cleaner than Russian natural gas? That crude oil could have come from Canada and been refined in America if President Biden hadn't pulled the plug on Keystone Pipeline. But instead, he allowed Putin to have Nord Stream 2. For those at home and are wondering, what is a Nord Stream 2 pipeline? It is another pipeline built by Russia to go in to supply natural gas to Europe, but it goes around Ukraine, because our current pipeline goes through Ukraine, and Ukraine gets part of the money. But with this new administration and President Biden going to meet with Mr. Putin, what did he do? He waived the sanctions. But when President Biden watched Putin build hundreds of thousands of men along the border of Ukraine, there was an amendment offered in the Senate to put sanctions on Nord Stream 2. People wonder, did it pass? 
It came close, but it failed. You want to know why it failed? Because the Biden administration used all their political will to lobby against it passing. And more of American millions of dollars went to fund Putin, who uses it for his military. That natural gas that goes to Europe, it could have come from America. From our federal lands and waters where President Biden hasn't approved a single new lease. Not one. He's actually shut them down. And if we had continued the energy policies of the Trump administration, we'd actually be safer today and Putin would have less money to fund his military weaponry. Our allies would be safer today. And American families would be paying less for cleaner energy. In California, it's more than $5 a gallon, as you know, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if you can remember back when, when it was much less. Now I hear from our colleagues on the other side that the reason American resources must stay in the ground is climate change. I listened to Mr. Kerry be interviewed as Russia invaded Ukraine, and he was concerned. His former Secretary of State now helping in this administration. I thought he'd be concerned about the men and women in Ukraine. He was concerned, would, would, would Putin still work with climate change? I think you should tell that to the Ukrainian people. I don't think one of them is concerned about that right now. Now I hear our colleagues when they talk about climate change, but if they really studied it, the truth is what I told you before. American natural gas is 42% cleaner than Russian natural gas. And we can guarantee you this, we're not invading Ukraine. We won't use the resources, the carpet bomb, to shoot innocent women and children. If you were concerned about the environment like I am, you should support this bill. You could, Mr. Speaker. It immediately approves the Keystone Pipeline because we've waited long enough and can't afford to wait a minute longer. It removes all restriction on liquid natural gas exports so we can become an arsenal of energy for the free world. And it restarts the leases on federal lands and waters which are being held up by the Biden administration. You know, it's interesting, Mr. Speaker, you, you have the majority here on the floor you have the Biden administration that's in your power of your party. But those six, six permits that sit at the desk of the Secretary of Energy that could take money away from Putin, provide American jobs, and provide Europe with cleaner natural gas from America still sit there to this day. Because somehow you think it's better for climate change. A vote for this bill is a vote to produce more energy for our allies. It means American jobs. It means our allies don't have to deal with Putin, be held hostage to him. It means Putin will not have the millions of dollars from Americans to buy the weaponry that he uses to kill innocent people in Ukraine. A vote for this bill is a vote to provide relief for working families at the pump. It means Americans won't have to pay the high prices they are today. I know at the White House when they are asked this question, they said it's okay that the price is high. Because that way somehow it helps them with climate change that they could get more renewals. Renewable energy. Well, Mr. Speaker, that's a tax on all Americans, especially low income. But I don't know in this administration they have the highest inflation we had in 40 years. Somehow they must make that's positive too. Mr. Speaker, in this new administration, we now have crime. We have a border that's not secure. The people are coming across the border that are on the terrorist watch list. We now have more fentanyl in America today than at any time, enough to kill every single American seven times over. Mr. Speaker, I know you would care about this. Did you know today the number one cause of death from those between the ages of 18 to 45 is fentanyl? You know where it comes from? The chemicals of China across the border of Mexico. 
that it no longer is attended to. I know, Mr. Speaker, you, the president of your, of your party has put the vice president in charge, and she's been there one time. One time. Every city in America has become a border city today. Every single week, and Mr. Speaker, you know this based upon your background. You see the deaths that are happening. It's unwanted, it's unneeded, and we could do better. A vote for this bill is a vote to deprive Putin of a major revenue stream. Mr. Speaker, it's not difficult. There won't be any pressure. All the members have to do is walk onto the floor, take the card out of their pocket, put it in the little box, and if you're somebody because you're afraid of COVID and you're still home or you're on a boat, you can still vote by proxy with this majority. But what you can do is you can vote for this bill. You can vote to make America energy independent. You can lower the gas price. You can take the money out of Putin's hands that he uses to kill innocent people. Everybody in the world is watching. The sad part, Mr. Speaker, I bet if this bill was on the floor in any country in Europe, it'd be 100% vote for. I'll be watching. I think America will be watching. Will we stand for America and for freedom? Would we stand for President Zelensky, who didn't take the advice of President Biden and leave his country, who doesn't ask for men and women from America to come to fight, he just asks to provide some weapons so they can defend against Putin. The sad part about that, Mr. Speaker, every day that we allow crude or natural gas to come from Russia, American money is going to Putin. Let's stop that and stop that today. With that, I yield back.